how's going? Welcome to LFC Transfer Talk. Now, some reports have come out in the world of local football club about a player in which we have been heavily linked to sign in the January 22 transfer window, and that is Kasper Kozlowski from Pogan Sezessin. Now, he's 18 years old, stands with around 6'4", 1-ish. He's also or 6'4", 4-ish, some shit like that. He's two-footed, can play a couple of different positions, many players as a centre midfielder, but does have the ability to play as a holding midfielder and also as an attacking midfielder. His valuation on transfer market is around £7 million and his contract length is up until 2023. He is a player that we have been previously linked with before. I have talked about him in a previous show. I have also stated, even though reports claim that he's the Polish De Bruyne, that he reminds me of an 18-year-old Steven Gerrard. And I'm old enough... I don't want to give my age away, but I'm old enough to remember Steven Gerrard's debut and what he became. So I like him to a more of a Steven Gerrard. And I have previously before mentioned multiple times in previous LFC transfer talks and yada yada, the list goes on kind of thing. But all the way back to the summer 21, I want another playmaker and I want one in January. And although be it if we don't sign one, but we get like a Dennis Zakaria, a defensive minded midfielder because of our defensive transitions, all good, but I would still like a playmaker. He can be the one. It could be Pedro Concaves, it could be Dominic Soboslai, which is something I've banged on about for quite a long time. Even if I go back further, way back to the summer 2017 transfer window, I made that statement of I want two playmakers at Liverpool Football Club with a little bit of profanity thrown in there. At the time, we had Phil Coutinho. The one that I wanted was a player that plays for Manchester City now, who was playing for Monaco at the time. And Manchester City bought him for 50 million, but out of silver. He was the guy that I wanted. But we didn't get him. I wanted De Bruyne in 2015. We didn't get him. I wanted Edin Dzeko back in the day when he was over in uh, Wolfsburg, I believe. We didn't get him. I wanted Leroy San in the summer 2016 when he was over at Schalke. We didn't get him. We got gangsters, as you might But I love the gangsters, so whatever. But you get the idea. So this is a kid that I really, really like. He's got ability, but he reminds me so much of Steven Gerrard. And him being that midfielder, in terms of linking the midfield to the attack, and like I said, we could have gone for the Pedro Concavis, is that little bit more of a proven player, but because he's 18 years old and maybe sky's the limit, so to speak, in terms of what he can turn out to be, and he fits right into the criteria of FSG's you know, business model, which is signing young players to get salon value, like the money ball system. People keep preaching consistently, constantly, that it's self-sustaining business model. That's what they want you to believe because they've got the finances, if realistically, in January, we want two players, two £60 million players that can buy like that, but they don't want to. They could even spend £150 million on go to go get a Kylian Mbappe or even a Kane. They can, but they just don't want to because it doesn't make business sense. So when you look at Kasper Kozlowski, where you've got a Brighton who are sniffing around, we are supposedly back into the mix. There's Manchester City on the outside peripherals looking in, and they may try and assign him. If we are able to, where reports are stayed, Brighton have, have moved ahead and they're in the pole position to land a signature and stuff like that. And it's kind of like these football clubs that players are linked with those. They're like, oh, hold on, we can go get him. We can offer regular first team football. So if we can bring him to Liverpool Football Club, I'll be ecstatic because I like him. He's very, very good. He's got very dri uh, very good dribbling skills, you know, can link the midfield to the attack and he's got that sort of ability to be that box-to-box -box midfielder. Hence why I like him to an 18-year-old Steven Gerrard. He's so, so close to it. People can say De Bruyne, but in 2015, I said, right now in world football, there is no one closer to Steven Gerrard than Kevin De Bruyne. And I'm right. And maybe Kevin has taken it to a different level. You can call it whatever the hell you want. You can maybe even say that football has evolved to the point of where football today is different to when Gerrard was playing it. Because when you look at the mannerisms, the body language, the running, the, the striking of the ball, the decision making, everything about Kevin De Bruyne reminds me so much of Steven Gerrard. Literally everything. So he was the guy that I wanted. I tweeted in my old Twitter account. John W. Henry, when uh, Kevin De Bruyne was playing for, I believe, Wolfsburg, when he got sold by Chelsea and was the leading assist player in, in Europe, cost 50 million. Go get him. Look at him. He's a destroyer. Literally a, a dis a eater of worlds, if you will, to steal that kind uh, of a phrase from that guy from WWE, if you will. So this guy has the potential. And Klopp likes signing Polish players. Kevin Lewandowski, if you go back to 2016, we were linked with um, Peter Zelinski with that whole Empoli, Napoli, Udinese triangular BS that was going on. So Klopp what, likes Polish people, whether it's because it's, he's got a... Um it's got a like a, a strand of DNA in his own family, whether it's uh, Ula, his wife, who's got a bit of Polish, I don't want to say in her, but in her DNA, 
I don't know. Maybe Klopp just loves Polish people. I literally do not know the answer. But he's got a little bit of soft spot for Polish people. So Kasper Kozlowski, especially with what Klopp had done with uh, Kevin, uh, not Kevin De Bruyne, Robert Lewandowski, you, you can do the same. And I have seen those reports a few months ago that Robert Lewandowski was advising Kasper Kozlowski not to come to the Premier League, like to go to a different league or stay in the league that he's in. But... With Klopp, what he's done, some players would look, oh, look what he did to his career. Well, I want to go there. So, he is most likely going to come to the Premier League, potentially in January, because he falls into that same Dennis Zakaria, a little bit different, where he's got an extra year. He's got 18 months remaining on his contract from January onwards, compared to Dennis Zakaria, where he's got months remaining. And Dennis Zakaria is a player that I truly believe will be a local football club player within the first seven days. Three days is what I believe, with the number two on the back of his shirt. But Ka this Kasper Kozlowski one, if I don't get the, you know, um... If I don't get the Dominic Sobos like, you know, uh, Pedro Concaves, I want Dominic Sobos like, because I know what he can become. If I don't get him and I don't get Pedro Concaves, I'll, I'll accept this guy, but I'll be a little bit disappointed that I didn't get uh, someone like, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Dominic Sobos like. I'll be a little bit disappointed that I didn't get him. But this guy can become, when you look at Liverpool Football Club, the position we're in, he can be a bit of a project for Klopp because there's a, the positives of signing him. Like, if we bought Domi Sobozlai, he's going to take a little bit of development, but not as much as someone like Kasper Kozlowski. If you go back to Saad Jumane 2016, he was labelled an individual that was erratic, and he was this, he was that. Klopp calmed it down, developed him, and look at him now. One of the best forwards in world football, definitely in the Premier League. He fits our system, philosophy, yada yada, you name it. Move from right to left, in the front three, whatever. When you look at Domi Sobozlai, he's... Not a complete finished article, needs a little bit tweaking, a little bit coaching and so forth. And that might take a year. And what I'm, well, the reason why I'm saying this is that Klopp's only got two years remaining on his contract, certainly from 22 onwards to 24. And if we bring in Kasper Kozlowski, and when you look at even the Curtis Jones, where because of the loyalty basis from a fan's perspective, he's a scouser, he's raised in the same location as Gerard was and blah, blah, whatever. He's the next Gerard. He's not the next Gerard. This guy's the next Gerard, in my opinion. But what I will certainly state is that it becomes a bit of a competition and maybe Curtis will survive and be at Liverpool for the rest of his career. Maybe he won't. He might not be a one-man club. Maybe he might have to move on. If he's not living up to expectations, decisions will have to be made. But this is an individual that if Klopp takes him under his wing, brings him to Liverpool, develops him, maybe in tandem with Harvey Elliott, because Harvey Elliott and him are at the same age, and we could have potentially two playmakers, whereby I would get what I wanted, what I made the statement in the summer 2017, I want two playmakers at Liverpool Football Club. We would also have the wizard in Thiago Cantara for the next three two years excuse me even though i want tiago longer i want tiago till he's 36 minimum but we could have these two kids which club can develop at the same time and then by the time he leaves in 24 there you go steven gerard here's a present for you that's what literally it could be and then club I mean, sorry gerard could bring it you know someone like a Kani chukomeka at the same time as well <laughs> he could bring him with him from aston villa I don't know, I'm talking shit in that one, but this guy, I like him a lot. Uh, remember to click on the like button below, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Bekele, welcome to the show. He says he's a good player and I like him. And the price is fair. It is a very fair price. He's a guy who can play box to box. He definitely is. Uh, is Dennis, Kasper and Harvey, etc. players in Liverpool. Klopp can display a variety of tactics. Absolutely. One thing I will certainly say is Dennis Akai didn't see his highlights to refresh my memory. But I don't, he may be a box to box midfielder, but he's definitely the opposite to Naby Keita. Even though Naby Keita is more defense-minded than offense-minded, but Naby Keita can do it all. But he's, let's put it this way, he's, who's the opposite of? He's, I would say Dennis Akra is more defensive without actually refreshing my memory on his highlights. He's more defense-minded than offense-minded. It's not that he can't do it. Maybe he's the, actually, he's probably more of a complete midfielder than Aureli Tukumani because Aureli Tukumani is not very good being a box-to-box -box and being someone who can get into the final third. So he's probably a little bit more of a finished article, hence being a little bit more older and uh, mature and stuff like that. So um, in my opinion, getting Kasper Kozlowski would be good. It'd be a young, uh, exciting addition to our actual squad and he would be a, especially when you look at the 17 non-homegrown, 8 homegrown players, which I will, of course, reel off shortly and how we would fit in and what we would potentially have to do because we can't just bring in Dennis Akrai and this guy. We have to get rid of someone. Uh, he is a limit. He's limited with the players and talents he has in the squad. He is, for sure, because we don't have a lot of resources. Let's get into the first report. First report, which is by Daily Mail. It states in the headline, Brighton, close to sealing £8 million signing of Polish teenager Kasper Kozlowski with Liverpool and Manchester City also monitoring the midfielder. 
Brighton are close, uh, closing in, and this was written on 11 December, which was five days ago. Closing in on, and when I saw this, I was like, oh my dear lord, I was literally panicking. <laughs> I was just like, it fits, but I was like, no way, please don't. Brighton are closing in on an £8 million deal for 18 year old Poland international midfielder Kasper Kozlowski. Manchester City, Liverpool, and AC Milan have all been following the progress of Kozlowski, who plays for Pogan Sesesin, uh, who are uh, second in the Polish league. The teenager ha made his first team debut as a 15 year old. And has long been earmarked as a future a star for the future, picking up uh, six uh, full caps uh, for Poland already, and figured in his country's uh, for his country joining Euro 2020. Yeah, he did. At the time, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna claim that I remember him coming off the bench like, oh yeah, this kid, oh my god, like no, he came on, I had no clue. <laughs> he definitely came on Madrid afterwards. Uh, Kozlowski would still require a work permit, but there are hopeful that could be achieved uh, on appeal, and uh, Brighton would then likely loan him out to Royal Union as uh, then achieved appeal and Brighton would likely loan him out to Royal Union saying uh, Golose, the Belgian side owned by Brighton owner Tony Bloom who currently who are currently top of Belgium's Pro League. So Brighton sign him if he gets a work permit they'll bang him straight on loan to Belgium. Interesting. Right and if you look at the what Liverpool fans believe when uh, FSG were talking about buying clubs up like you know of course there's two lose on part by um, Jerry Cardinal the owner of Redbird who's invested in FSG rather than Liverpool Football Club that 11% stake blah blah whatever many believe that oh when they were going to start buying these clubs that they'll all be catering to Liverpool it's not that's not the from a fan's perspective that's the mentality that they're buying all these clubs so that it's going to be a feeder and it's going to be a a place where we could then nurture talent and steal the best talent or send players to but that's not the way they think they think it just means different revenue streams by controlling all of these and having a, a you know a hand in these different pots all over the club that's what it is it's a matter of building that sort of let's say the like city football club group you call it you know I don't know, or Red Bull you know they've got one as well so it'd be like FSG football group that's what they would want to do but it wouldn't be all towards Liverpool Football Club, even though we would still be, no matter who the hell they buy, their most valuable asset on their actual portfolio, which it still is. Brighton have also been linked with the move for Blackburn Rovers, Ben uh, Brereton. I've seen that between that out, Diaz. Uh, but I uh, just um, maintaining a watch for a brief. Blackburn won 20 million for the Chile International of interest and have interest from Spanish side Sevilla, who valued the 22 year old. At close to eight million pounds. Meanwhile, Brighton defender Louis Dunk expected to miss around eight weeks after a knee injury. Blah blah whatever. We don't really care about that. Anyway, they they're basically saying that they're almost close to complete the deal. Uh, next report, which is by the Hard Tackle, states in the headline: Liverpool ready to pay ten million pounds to sign Casper Kozlowski. Get your shit together, Mike Ledo's a collar with twist and Junior Ward. Also known as intern, Liverpool are prepared to offer ten million pounds to secure a uh, junior. I'm gonna bust your balls from here to Timbuktu. To, as long as I'm creating content, and as long as you're the freaking sporting director, I'm gonna bust your balls. No homo. So ten million uh, to secure the signing of Polish wonder kid Kasper Kozlowski, who uh, was close to signing for Brighton, was close to signing for Brighton and Hove Albion. Was interesting. So. The other report, the Daily Express one is saying that they're close to signing him. These are saying was close. Well, whether how readable this media outlet is, I don't know. According to a report from Polish publication Super Express, Liverpool are keen on signing teenage prospect Kasper Koslowski from Pogan Sezesin. Interestingly, going back to 2016, when you look at uh, Peter Zielinski, Empoli, Udinese, Napoli, all that crap that happened, Klopp missed out. And Klopp tried. Klopp tried hard to bring him to Liverpool Football Club. This is Klopp's maybe... I said this before and it backfired on me. Second bite of the cherry to get his hands on a specific type of a player from a specific part of the region geographically, like European, this kind of individual. I'm ready to make a better offer than the Premier League rivals Bayern and Hove Alpian uh, for the midfielder. Kozlowski joined uh, the Pogan Session Academy in 2016 from fellow Polish outfit uh, Bacilic so uh, Sozalin, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and has enjoyed a rapid progression. Uh, through the youth ranks at the club, having made his first team debut in 2019 at the age of just 15. The youngster has become a regular in the side over the past couple of years. Uh, Kozlowski has been in particular impressive 
form in the current season, producing a return of three goals and four assists in 19 matches in all competitions. The 18-year-old has made his debut for Poland national team and has collected six caps already, even finishing in the Euro, uh, UEFA Euro 2020 earlier this year. Kozowski's rapid growth for Pogan Sesesin has uh, seen him attract interest from clubs all over Europe. Liverpool also believed to be among the suitors for the 18-year-old. However, recent reports have indicated the teenager who can play as a central midfielder or an attacking midfield or an attacking midfielder was on his way to joining Bayern and Hove Albion. Indeed, it has been claimed that Kozlowski is close to completing an 8 million pound move to the Amex Stadium. However, a report mentioned above is now claiming that Liverpool have not given up on their pursuit of the Poland international and now ready to beat the Premier League rivals uh, for an improved offer for him. I will know. I will know if we sign him, it won't be the summer, it will be in January. Because if we don't sign him in January, you know, like when it comes to Denis Zakaria, there's this theory and this this kind of narrative in media that FSU will just rather get a pre-contract deal signed and get him in the summer for free. And we're not going to do any deals in January. Klopp has already reiterated when it comes to wingers, when the Luis Diaz's, Arnold Danjumas and Musa Diabis and whoever else, Tom DeCanari's in the world that have been linked with us. No offence, especially Arnold Danjuma and Musa Diaby. But... Um, this kid, when you look at the last report that I will read, he wants to leave. And because he wants to leave, it's either strike it now or miss out on him because he'll go elsewhere. So this is the, the sort of fine line we are playing with. Either get him now or miss out on him. You can't do the whole Dennis Akarai and create that narrative of it's a business sense to get him on a freebie. Stop saving your pennies, FSG. Pull your finger out of your ass. Put your money on the table. Put your money where your mouth is because you are liars. And Liverpool fans don't know FSG are liars. And they've lied through their teeth. Not just about the ESL. Go back to the summer 2019. I'll prove it. Summer 2019 transfer window on the after the back on the back of 1819 season where we missed out on the Premier League, but we won the Champions League, won the Metropolitano Stadium, six baby, which this season will be seven baby. But what I'm saying is Going into the summer 2019, many wanted new additions. Let's strengthen, let's go again, let's win the Premier League. Of course, we blew the league apart and then there was a whole pandemic in lockdowns and all that kind of crap that happened and the null avoid, which eventually we resumed the season, finished and completed and won the damn thing. A little bit different circumstances, but what you've got to understand is in the summer 2019, it was about spending, but then because of all the links and all the, the sort of social media numbers and the drive and the traffic, they just loved it. And then somewhere in between, they were like, hold on. They went to their go-to media outlets, the Echoes and the Thetics and you name it, the so-called experts that I'd only in the back pockets of FSU. Otherwise, they wouldn't really get the information from the so-called PR teams. But they started creating this narrative of what Liverpool Football Club are doing is we're going to save. We're going to cut back. We're going to save this summer. We only bought in Adran, who I don't even class as a first-teamer. And we bought in Javier Lisset van der Berg for a combined fee of five million, five and a half million. But Adran was a freebie. So we bought in those three players. But what we ultimately did was the narrative as the summer went on, it was we're saving, we're going to go big the following summer. So the liars, because they never went big. And although there was a pandemic, they could have gone big. But when you look at the pandemic, when it happened, and the European leagues were all postponed, no fans, no nothing, the excuse was in the first month, we lost £100 million. Really? Not going to a finance aid that came, uh, that's beginning with the K, which I can never remember. So the liars. So this is why bringing in Kasper Kozlowski in January, especially if you don't, he'll go elsewhere because he wants to leave. And then the Denis Sakurai one, which is like, no, you need him now. We don't need to wait. You made this mistake in the summer 2018, January 2019, summer 2019, January 2020, summer 2020, January 2021, summer 2021. And even summer in January 2021, when defense was all ravaged with injuries, Van Dijk, Mate, and Gomez, you didn't buy anyone right at the start when Klopp needed it desperately. That's when an owner shows, I got your back, Klopp. Don't worry about it. I got you. Here's a centre back. Here's Kanate. Here's Upa Makano. Here's bloody next man. Here's this guy. Then do it. Liars. So the report indicates that the Reds uh, are willing. And this. And if you go back, then it proves that the reason why ha FSG have this hands-off approach because they know Klopp can pull off miracles. But at that time, he needed a little bit of support. And they were. They made the mistake. And they made multiple mistakes. If you go back to the Nicaro one, blaming the previous owners for the mistakes and blah blah. blah. This goes on. I said it. You don't want me to remember the first five years. Uh, hanging out to dry Brenda Rogers. The report indicates that the Reds are willing to pay a sum of £10 million for Casper Kozlowski, two more than Brighton are offering. The Merseyside Giants are an attractive destination for a youngster given that they are already uh, they get a chance to work with a successful manager, Jürgen Klopp, who also has a track record of nurturing and developing a young talent. The likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold, Curtis Jones, don't include that guy's name, Harvey <laughs> Elliott. 
I don't include Harvey Elliott's name in that. Not not right now. Not right now. Uh, Trent Alexander Arnold, I would agree with that. Curtis Jones, I don't agree with that. And Harvey Elliott, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with. It. I think maybe the start of this season, yes, so. But last season he was on loan. He was on loan to Blackburn. So I, I don't think you can really credit Klopp with the development of Harvey Elliott because he was developing but he needed tweaking because he was falling into that where he was running with the ball further forward and then he would make the wrong decision in the final third. The end product where he's got it but it was he was just making the wrong decision and that comes with coaching, that comes with maturity, that comes with experience, that comes with learning, etc. But then he suffered that injury which they call a dislocation, slash leg break, combination of the two, whatever you want to call it. And some youngsters who have gone to make, and some could even argue, by the way, as well, he's made Van Dyke better, make an impact at the first team level at Liverpool in recent years. And uh, with and by the way, if we do get Kasper Kozlowski, my question would be, Klopp, do you still need to play Trent Alexander-Arnold in the midfield? <laughs> and the midfield department of Anfield needing to be refreshed in a year or two, adding a special talent like Kozlowski makes sense for the club. It definitely does. It now remains to be seen if uh, Liverpool are successful in the attempts to be Brighton uh, and Hove Alpian. Uh, to the signing of the 18 year old sensation I will say and I will put this point out there if Liverpool Football Club are only willing to spend 10 million pounds in January and it's either Kasper Kozlowski or Denis Akarai I don't want to hear this nonsense we can only sign one because of limited funds or our owners are willing to spend 20 million pounds on two players which reportedly we could get Denis Akarai for 10 million but I've said this previously before some reports are 6 million pounds others are stating between 6 to 8 million pounds 8 to 10 million euros it's still lower than £10 million. It's fine. I want Dennis Sakurai. I believe we'll get him. I believe he'll be a beast. He will have the same impact that Kanate did. And our defence is a monster. Holy shit. <laughs> I fear that, brother. I love him, right? So, bringing him to Liverpool Football Club is a necessity. Don't make it about, oh, we'll wait till the summer because it'll be a freebie and it's a cheaper and it makes sense from a business point of view. Mid-season, we need him. Like I said before, 1819, 1920, they made these mistakes. They did not listen when there was a necessity because you got to think of it. When Phil Coutinho, an important player, leaves, it's like when Gerard left. There was a huge hole in the team. Phil Coutinho left a huge hole in the team. Suarez left a huge hole, ho a huge hole in the team. When Fernando left, there wasn't a huge hole in the team because Luis Suarez had come through mid-season. In January, one went out, one would one would come in and Luis Suarez take on that burden. But when you look at someone like um, Phil Coutinho, we haven't replaced Phil Coutinho. When people said that we haven't replaced Luis Suarez, we kind of did with Firmino in 2015, but it was years after. And when you look at someone like a Phil Coutinho, Klopp has been trying to use Naby Keira as that replacement. When you watch the games and you look at tactically and positions and things he's doing, when he's not really in that sort of position to be more defensive, like you know the Stein position of Trent compared to like where he should be on the pitch and you look at you know where the starting position of Naby is he's further up near the 18 yard box when he should be more where Trent should be when he's playing in that right back position but he's on the inside of the midfield and Henderson's out wide so a little bit crazy uh, there was an echo one but it just pretty much uh, stayed the same thing as the Super Express on the timeline Bikele says in the academy they have Matthias Koloski, I like him as well. I like Lane Clarkson. Lane Clarkson is the one I think is is a superstar. I know they keep pushing Morton. Morton's good too. Don't get me wrong, but I like I like Lane Clarkson. What do you uh, What do you say about this talent? Do you think he will start playing in the main squad? I think he's a I think he's a business deal for uh, FSG. Meaning that he's he's doing well. He's building a bit of a name. They'll probably loan him out. He'll be in a few pre seasons, and they'll probably end up selling him. My hunch, my opinion. I would like him to make it, but that's what I think. Maybe they might use him to try and, you know, when Casper comes in in January potentially, and then, you know, sort of like help him settle in and whatever, and then maybe, you know, depending on who does well and whatever. I've always said it, our, our youth system's not good in terms of the, 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 like our youth system's more about business, making money. Like the report that came out three, four months ago of we've made £106 million from our youth system. Why? Like, it's not, it should never be about that. Our youth system should be a feeder to our first team. There should be a clear, direct path. We should be looking realistically in every transfer window. Every transfer window, number one, we should be judging upon what our transfer uh, committee do. And also, Michael Edwards, they call it a twist. Uh, our spawn director, we should always judge him on every transfer window, not what they did in the past. Like, January, you judge him on January. You judge him on the summer. That's what you always do. You don't judge him well. In January, you got it right, but then in the summer, he got it wrong. You know, you don't look how well in the past, well, this is what they did and stuff like that. You always judge him on that transfer window. You can consider the past, but like the previous transfer window in terms of if it ties in well with the current transfer window but when you look at our actual youth system it should be a system of where 
every transfer window we should look at well we need a right back do we have one in the in this new system that we can promote that's ready and able and capable yes there is okay we don't need a right back that's what it should be but it's not because our, our players are not at that level of where they're ready to jump into the big time they're so far off Next report, which is by Rousing the Cop, is states in the headline, Liverpool prepared £10 million offer uh, to uh, win Kasper Kozlowski transfer race. So Liverpool hoped to secure eight, uh, a £10 million transfer for Kasper Kozlowski, according to reports. The Polish midfielder became a record breaker this summer. This comes from Polish outlet Super Express, which we've read in the previous one, so we don't really want to read this. We'll just read the actual... Ah, oh, there isn't anything else in the actual article. Lupu aim for Kasper Kozlowski transfer. The mirror, uh, let's see the mirror. Was. So the mirror similarly said back in October. It's an easy Kozlowski turn. Yeah, okay, well, I don't read the mirror one. <laughs> let's, let's skip that one. The last one is the one that I want to read. The other one doesn't matter because you guys have already tackled it. Sometimes these reports just tend to copy and paste. and they Or maybe not copy and paste, but they give the same information that the other reports do. So it's not really ne uh, necessary to read it over again. N the final report is the interesting one, which is how I believe... This is why I believe. I've not read the whole report, but I've seen the headline. Where I was like, bam, I'm running to conclusions. Which is why I made the claim that it's either in January or we miss out on him. We won't sign him if we don't get him in January. It's like get him now or miss out on him. And if you miss out on him, then you have to pay the you have to pay the price if you want him from Brighton or whoever gets him. And if a big club gets him like Manchester City, then Sayonara, Bon Viage, River Dutch, you're never getting him. How much how many times have Manchester City sold those a player? This is one thing that I can't stand when it comes to big teams. Uh we don't sell players to one another. You look at Dortmund, they sell to buying all the time. <laughs> but uh, we never do that. So, HITC is the next report. It states, teammate says 8.5 million pound Liverpool target is heading to England. Ragnar misses out. <laughs> Nicely throw that in there. I do say the headline, people. Kasper Kozlowski has agreed to move to a top uh, club from England and reported interest from young club Premier League giants Liverpool follow Poland international. Uh, Majesh uh, Raibos tells uh, Wes Zolo. Hope I pronounce it all right. Robert Lewandowski was 21 years of age when he was unveiled as a Borussia Dortmund player a decade ago and has 82 first-team appearances under his belt upon his arrival on the banks of the Rhine 2, not to mention 41 goals and the 2010 Akes Akestra Class uh, title. I hope I pronounced this right. Uh, I don't want uh, Jan Blavich coming after me. <laughs> Left hook glaring me in the face. Uh, Kozlowski, in contrast, has... Uh, contrast only turned 18 a couple of weeks ago. This report, by the way, was written two weeks ago by Danny Owen. So, and although the teenager has already forced his way into Paolo Sosa's plans in the, the national team setup, there's, fe there's a feeling in Poland that Kozlowski would be better off staying where he is rather than risk uh, becoming a small fish in a big uh, anthill pond. This is what Robert Lewandowski had stayed, which is what I was referring to previously before. Stay where you are, you get to play, then going elsewhere where you won't play regularly and you won't prove yourself and things like that. Whereas with Liverpool Football Club, it depends on how we do it. So here's the here's the here's the issue. Liverpool Football Club, which I have to bring it up. Let me bring it up real quickly. Liverpool Football let me read the last <laughs> I'm gonna go all over the place. Let me read the report and then I'll tell you what I'm thinking. So how it would work out, the reason why I'm thinking the way I'm thinking. So I'll come back to it for sure. So let's go back to the actual report. Uh, so a minnow, um, minnow in Liverpool Pacific Ocean of talent. So uh, Lewandowski himself claimed in October that Kozlowski, a talent attacking midfielder who's been compared to Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne, should turn down Liverpool in favour, extending his day at Polish Alfa Pogan Sezessin. So there you go. It appears that Kozlowski, however, is backing himself uh, to succeed at one of England's biggest uh, clubs with and as yet unnamed outfit fighting off competition from Rebus Locomotive Moscow uh, for his sought after signature. Is Kasper Kozlowski signing for Liverpool? Ralf Ragnar Scouts uh, probed the possibility of buying Kasper Kozlowski from uh, Pogan Sezessin. They asked him about him, explains the veteran fullback. Ragnar, as you might have heard, has agreed to a deal to become Manchester United's interim manager less than. Half a, uh, half a season as Lokomotiv Moscow's head of sports and development. So this is what he said prior to becoming the Manchester United interim manager. Lokomotiv 
We wanted to pay really good money, tens million, uh, 10 million euros, 8.5 million pounds, but apparently Casper has already made an agreement with some top club from England where he is where he is to go after the season. So maybe the summer. Interesting. But I believe he wants to go in January. Kozlowski has uh, three goals and three assists to his name from 14 orchestra class appearances this season. And according to Polish legend uh, Zabun, uh, the big new uh, Bonique <laughs> possesses the blue bar wow, these, these names like you want to even Jechik I barely got that one but these names are all over the place uh, possesses no offense uh, that would arrival that of Jamal Muslea, Jude Bellingham and Liverpool's own Harvey Elliott so the interesting thing is Ralph Radnick has basically let it slip that there is an England English team a big English team it says even as well it doesn't just say an English team it says a top club from England has uh, got the deal done and dusted for the summer. That could be Liverpool Football Club. But let me go to what I was going to say. So, here's the interesting thing. 17 non-homegrown players, 8 homegrown players. This is where it gets really, really tricky. Because if he wants to move in January, like this report I'd said in the actual headline that he uh, targets headed to England, right? So, he's heading to England and I've seen it, whether it's in this report or somewhere else, that he wants to leave in January. I think it's one of the other reports, the Daily Mail one that I read earlier on, that he wants to leave in January. Now, if he wants to leave in January, then what it becomes from a Liverpool football club point of view is you have to get him. And because we have 17 players, 16 already registered out of 17, which is the minimum, non-homegrown, Alisson Keller, two goalkeepers, five defenders, Van Dijk, Matip, Kanata, Robertson, Timikas, done. Then we've got three midfielders, Fabinho, Thiago, Naby Keita. That would be, what was that? Ten players. And then six forwards. We've got Firmino, Mane, Salah, Jota, Rigi and Minimino. Six. Sixteen. Dennis Akarai is a done deal as far as I'm concerned. Meaning that it's done. He's the guy. He's the number 17. He's number two on the back of his shirt, but he's the number 17 when it comes to registering. Means we have to get rid of someone. Is it a Rigi? to AC Milan or Atlanta who are supposedly interested and linked with him or is it Minimino where we go BAM see you later like I don't know the answer to this that's the way we get this brother through the door and if we do what it means is potentially we're preparing for the future meaning that if we bring in Kasper Kozlowski let's say hypothetically in January because Brighton are sniffing around and it's a risk and we could be probably worried that if we don't get him right now then maybe in the summer someone else could just like beat us to the point so to speak like Dakar and the list goes on so if we bring him in in January, then we would have Fabinho, Thiago, Naby Keita, Denis Zakaria, and Kasper Kozlowski. I don't want it to be, well, we'll get Kasper now, we'll get Denis in the summer. Because we need Denis now. We need that type of player right now. Because I want us to win everything. Imagine if we win the Premier League, Champions League, Carbon Adder Cup and FA Cup this season, do a freaking quadruple. No one has done it. No one has done it. Imagine if we go do it. Pepper's tried multiple times. But he hasn't done it. He's always fallen at the hurdle. It's always Liverpool Klopp like, with his big smiling grin and stops him and prevents him. So, if we do that, and I want us to have 4-4, four four, meaning 4 non-homegrown midfielders, 4 homegrown midfielders. That's what I want us to have. But if we do that and it's a 5, the way it could work out is that in the summer, with Naby Keita supposedly in the according to reports in the summer 21 rejecting the contract extension, his contract expires in the summer 23, we could cash in on him and then we would have the four. The other way of looking at it is that maybe we get Dennis Zakarai in January, we do agree the deal and we've got it all boxed off that he joins us in the summer and Naby Keita still goes. That could be the case. That could be the scenario. We know the whole Thiago thing of, you know, he, you know he's willing to go back to Barcelona and stuff like that. And he shut those rumours down immediately in that Champions League press conference. He was like, you know, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. So I'm glad. I want him to get a two-year contract extension to 36 anyway. So what I'm saying is that Kasper Kozlowski, this whole idea that he's not going to play and stuff like that, he can be important. And if he proves himself, he could take places. Meaning when you look at the significant importance of Henderson and if he's killing it, then he could overtake him. And, and Henderson will push him all the way. Henderson will push him because he's built like that, especially if you watch that interview with uh, on uh, Troops' uh, show that he did with Anton Ferdinand. If you watch that, and you'll, he'll talks a little bit about how Henderson's mind works, but you'll see a young kid coming through the door and he's doing 100 press-ups and he can only barely do five. And he's like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do 100. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat that guy. That's how he's built. So you give him three weeks, he'll do it. That's what I'm talking about. So I think when we look at that 17 non homegrown it depends on how they build it. Now, are they going to go five midfielders? Non homegrown and go three um, homegrown. Like, how are they going to do it? And who are those home homegrown midfielders going to be? Is it going to be Henderson? Is it going to be a Bellingham? Is it going to be a Curtis Sean? I don't know what they're thinking. I would like it to be four and four. I genuinely would like it for to be four and four. If we go six in the 
defense where we bring in two cent or maybe one center back. So we got Van Dyke, Matip, Kanate, Robertson, Thimikas, and we bring in a center back, Kobe Gleason, Bremer, could be Sven Botman, which apparently is going to go Newcastle. <laughs> if we get rid of Gomez and a Phillips. If we get rid of Gomez and the Phillips, which Klopp's ruled out January if Gomez going, but let's say we get rid of Gomez and the Phillips, then we would have literally six uh, non homegrown defenders, meaning we'd have Van Dijk, Matip, Kanati, let's say Gleason, Bremer, for argument's sake, then we would have Robertson and Timikas, that would be six, two goalkeepers, that's eight, and then if you go four in midfield, that would be 12, and then we would have five forwards. Makes sense, you would have hopefully Alexander Isaac, which would mean for me, no, I would like him to part ways. And then we would have uh, Salah, Mane, Jota, and it leaves one door open for another one. That could be Luis Diaz, it could be Anna de Juma, it could be Musa Diaby, it could be, I don't know, anyone. It could be even just a playmaker. It would make a lot of sense. It would make perfect sense. So from a Liverpool point of view, depending on how we go about things, depending on how the chips would fall, as they would say, depends on, it dictates maybe the direction we could go in. Like, are we going to bring in Kasper Kozlowski and a 5-3? and three? If we decide to have 5-3, and three, then that extra f fifth one, if we have six... Because what it could mean, let's just put it this way. If, let's say, for example, we have Van Dijk, Matip, Kanate, we may not allow Gomez to go if we're not willing to go six in the defence, where we go four and four in midfield and then five up top in terms of the attack. If we decide to go with five, then we could go five in the midfield and then five up top. We could just just literally keep it that way. And then we would have to have some of our English players, the, you know, from the eight side, the minimum eight. We would have to have something where we would have to have an English centre-back and Gomez may stay and, and that's how we would all work out. And we may, like I, I've always been thinking this, that, that we would go full English, meaning that if we change the defence where it would be the six, four centre-backs and two left-backs, and six non-homegrown uh, defenders, and then we go four in the midfield, non-homegrown, and then we go five up top, then what it would most likely mean is that we were looking to bring in some type of an English homegrown forward, which could be Harvey Barnes, could be Jared Bourne. That's what I've always been thinking, certainly over the last number of months. But I believe the best way to go about it is everything that we build around is the midfield. We go four and four in midfield. Fabinho, Thiago, Naby Keita, and bring in Denis Zakaria. And if you bring in Kasper Kozlowski in January, then... We, could ha we would have five, but we would have to get rid of Rigi. And if we get rid of Rigi or the Minimino, then we would have the 17 that we could register. And Kasper Kozlowski can play and he can prove himself and it could be a little bit exciting. And because he's young and maybe he's itching and he maybe wants the adventure, and I think January is the reason why I believe that it's January or it's nothing. And from a Liverpool point of view, win the Carbonara Cup, it pays for it. I think the Carbonara Cup, we get 20 million. I think for winning the competition, we're literally right there. We win against Leicester in this month, which is next week. We beat them in the quarters. We get into the semi-final. We're one arm length away. We're one step away. We're touching distance. Beat whoever's in the semi-final, get into the final, win the thing that pays for the two players. Done. So getting Dennis Sakurai in January and getting Kasper Kozlowski, I'll be happy with it because I know what Kasper can become. I know what he can become because I've already said it. He reminds me of an 18-year-old Steven Gerrard. I know what he can become and I'll be willing to wait and be prepared to be patient that he develops and he gets the nurturing and development at Liverpool Football Club because after Klopp, there'll be Gerrard, right? And he's the next Gerrard. I mean, next, he's got the attributes of a Gerrard. It reminds me of Gerrard and then that man comes in and this is why I talk about Kani Chakwameka. Like, develop him. Show that you've got that capabilities because if you can do that with uh, with players over there, then you're showing that you've got the capabilities of developing players. So when you come to Liverpool with the limited resources under this scumbag ownership, you're going to have to work on a stranger budget and show creativity and show that you can develop and nurture and, and stuff like that. So... I think from a Liverpool football club point of view, if you can bring these two in, even though it's not suppose like or a Pedro Concaves, but if we get a Kasper Kozlowski, I'd be willing to be patient, even though we're at a different level. But because of how good he is, he could literally just go like that. Boom. He could just have that rocky boost run. He could hit hit the moon. Like that's how good he can become just like that rapidly quickly. So I'd be willing to take a punt, bring him to Liverpool Football Club in January rather than wait till the summer because if we do a deal and we have an agreement word of mouth contract whatever maybe pay that premium price like we do with Nabi Care. if we do that then maybe yes but I don't want it to be well we'd rather bring in Kasper now and wait for Zakarai in the summer or we bring in Zakarai now and then we wait for Kasper I'd rather get them both now because what I'm looking at is I'd rather get the two in now and then assess the squad in the summer because I already have the ideas of get Alexander Isaac get Jude Bellingham get that player and reshape the 25-man squad and do it that way and when you do that 
then you have the depth that you actually need whereby the following year which will be 22-23 dismantle world football whereby by winning the Champions League we will actually have seven trophies and if we win four this season let's go for seven next season <laughs> do you understand me or maybe with the depth that we have you may have the capabilities of being unstoppable people because I really want that badly under Klopp I really want it un badly under Klopp because then he puts a marker down he sets a standard he does the unthinkable better than the the ones that actually did it originally and we do better. We have that gold Premier League trophy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is why I'm, I I think about all of these things. Because hence why it's Think LFC TV. Because I think. I think. I come with logic and I come with common sense. So at the end of the day, if we get him in January, it's positives. It's better to get him in January than to wait till the summer because others could snatch him. And I'd rather not that happen. I'd rather get him in January, but I don't want it to be at the expense of Dennis Akraya. I have to emphasize that we need De Dennis Akraya badly. That type of a world of a play badly and he's one of the best right now in world football that's not at that level of the headlines fans know about him like if you were to look at it from a hardcore and a casual point of view casuals don't know jack shit about dennis akaraya hardcores know about dennis akaraya so this is why we have got to dip into the market get dennis akaraya through the door not going to cost a lot six to eight million pounds is what's been reportedly stated we supposedly made a 10 million pound bid i believe he's going to join us i believe he wants to join us I believe within the first seven days, within the first three days, I believe he's going to hold up the shirt. I said seven, but three days, I believe he's going to hold up the shirt with the number two on the back of his shirt. I believe it. That's done. I believe it's game over. Like people, media members, media outlets writing reports that uh, the big last deal that Michael Edwards is going to do before he leaves is going to be to sign a Luis Diaz and then he's on his way. And the third year is because of Mane Salah going to Africa Cup Nations. But for me, it doesn't matter whether they go. And Klopp shut down those rumours earlier on in the press conference last uh, yesterday of we'll find solutions. We've already thought about this in the summer, which they kind of didn't, but whatever. <laughs> uh, maybe when you look at the Ox the first time, maybe that's what he's referred to. But that doesn't work, Klopp. You need to think of something else. Um, but what I will certainly say is that in, in January, even though those will go, it still makes logical sense for Liverpool Football Club to say, Mini Mino, see you later, go to Wolves, go to whoever you want, go to Southampton, they can buy him from us. And if they give us, let's say, £10 million, that's Kasper Kozlowski, that pays for Dennis Zakaria, done and dusted, and we go from strength to strength. And then in the summer, we can start to reshape things rather than keeping players at Liverpool for far too long and then put the club in a position over that next cycle, things like that, and the club can develop like a Kasper and a Harvey and a Curtis Jones and this and that kind of stuff and then when he leaves he leaves at least and he achieves what he said in December 2019 he wants to leave in the club in a position where he can continue his success and then Stevie comes in and then he continues and takes it to another level but Stevie's got to focus on Villa and he's got to focus on his own game meaning as a manager because he rapidly needs to quickly improve he's got to get Villa to be uh, to be a team that people fear not be difficult to be be fair like we when teams face Villa Teams have got to be worried about facing Villa. Like there's got to be a little bit, there's got to be a rhythmic approach to what they actually do. Like Liverpool, we've got this rhythmic approach. Sometimes it can be a little bit dysfunctional, but we do have that sort of structure which gives us that rhythmic sort of approach from back to front. But anyway, hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. But anyway, it comes to the end of the show, people. Um, I will be back, of course, at 10 o'clock when uh, we will do the roundup show. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we will batter. Newcastle, not hopefully the 7-0 that Manchester City achieved yesterday, but hopefully we will win comfortably and we can get the three points and put a lot more pressure on them. Right, I'm out of here. So that wraps up LFC Transfer Talk. Click on the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and thanks very much for watching.